The NFL draft experts were wrong. Adding Michael Penix Jr. was the smartest move by any team in the first round of the 2024 NFL Draft. The vast majority of fans and experts consider the Atlanta Falcons taking Michael Penix Jr. 8th overall in the 2024 NFL Draft a huge mistake by the front office for three major reasons. The first... Most draft experts had Michael Penix Jr. projected to be a mid to late first round pick. He is a very talented thrower of the football, but due to his age and previous injuries, he was not as highly thought of as other quarterback prospects. So the Falcons taking him eighth overall was considered a massive reach. The second was they just signed Kirk Cousins to a massive deal in free agency for him to be the starting quarterback for the Falcons. The Falcons gave Cousins a four-year, $180 million deal with $90 million guaranteed. Spending a top 10 pick on a player who might not see the field for the majority of his rookie contract is not generally considered the best use of resources. The third reason was that there were still players available who could have filled major issues for the Falcons. The most notable was Edge Rusher. They haven't had a player go for double-digit sacks in seven years, and every pass rusher was available for them to pick at the eighth spot. The Falcons have a roster that is built to compete for championships. So many consider it the smart move to be adding a player who can help this team win now. We believe that this decision was not as reckless as everyone in the media would have you believe. I want to go as far as to say we loved it, but it was far from the worst decision made during the draft. It's going to take some serious critical thinking, but by the end of this video, I believe you will agree with us that the media and fans have the wrong opinion on this move. Let's start by taking on the reach allegation. The idea of a reach stems from how the draft experts value a player versus where the player was actually drafted. The idea is that a player picked too far ahead of where he was slotted to go is considered a reach. But just because a draft expert has that value on a player, does that mean every organization has that same value? Not necessarily. A great example happened during the 2020 draft when Brandon Ayuk was considered an early to mid second round pick. The 49ers knew the Packers, who were picking at 26, needed a receiver and might have been targeting Ayuk as he was the best remaining receiver, according to the 49ers board. So they traded in front of them to 25 and reached on Ayuk. I bet there are a few teams that wish they would have reached on him now. The point is, once a pick is used, there is no value to it anymore. It is on the player and the team to prove that that selection was a valuable one. If Penix ends up being the Falcons franchise quarterback of the future, it doesn't matter where he was drafted. But Kirk Cousins signed a four-year deal. How do you know he is a quarterback of the future if we won't see him play until his fifth year in the NFL? There is an easy answer to that. Cousins didn't sign a four-year deal. I know what has been said by every reporter across the NFL, but it's important to look at the details of the contract, specifically the guaranteed money portion. Once a player runs out of guaranteed salary on their contract, a team can cut the player while only having to pay the rest of their signing bonus to them. This is what we know as a dead cap hit. Cousins guaranteed money runs out after the second year of his contract and in 2026 they could actually cut him and save 7.5 million dollars. So essentially Cousins signed a two-year deal with the option to go four years. There is actually a good chance Penix could be the starting quarterback in two years if Cousins play declines or they just want to go with the cheaper option. Now, you could argue they should have used a pick to fill their biggest need, which is edge rusher. And you will be right. They for sure need an edge rusher, and if the draft ended after the first round, they would have failed to fill that need. Good thing for them, the draft didn't end after the first round, and they were able to pick up Washington star Braylon Trice in the third round. Trice had 53 hurries and 80 total pressures last season, the most out of anyone in this draft class. I would also argue quarterback was still a need for the Falcons. Kirk Cousins will be 36 next year and is still coming off a major injury. 
There haven't been many quarterbacks that have torn their Achilles. The last prominent one I could find was Dan Marino in 1993 during his age 32 season. So we have limited data on their long-term career effects. Marino did come back and had a great season in 94, throwing for over 4,400 yards, but he never came close to that number again during the rest of his career. Cousins is three years older than Marino was when he got injured and nowhere near the player he was. While we all can just assume Cousins will come back and be his usual self, we really don't have any guarantee that will happen. Bringing in Penix protects the Falcons if Cousins can't regain his previous form, or at the very least, has to miss a few games to start the year. Michael Penix Jr. was the best insurance policy in the entire draft. The Falcons are placing a huge gamble on Cousins' return to form, but they have no guarantee that he will ever be the same player he was. They showed this in the limited guaranteed money they gave him and by drafting Penix at 8. Smart teams mitigate risks as much as they can, and bringing in Penix definitely ensures the quarterback position if anything goes wrong with Cousins. Quarterback is the most important position in all of sports, and no price is too high to get that position right. Was the move a surprising one? Absolutely. But a surprising move doesn't mean a bad move. At worst, Penix is one of the best backups in the NFL. At best, he could be a season savior and a franchise quarterback. I would say that'd be worth more than a rookie edge rusher. But tell us what you think. Do you think drafting Michael Penix Jr. was a bad choice? If you are still unsure about Michael Penix Jr., you can find our draft profile on him right here. We broke down all of his pros and cons for you. Uh, so we think you should give it a watch and a thumbs up. Until next time, we are the RFL Show, and we'll see you in the next one.